drama, adventure, and everything action. These are the ingredients chosen to make the perfect video game. But Quantic Dream accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. David Cage. Thus, Heavy Rain was born. An unintentionally hilarious game that will steal my heart for the next 10 years and beyond. is a murder mystery starring four protagonists. Disheveled father trope number three, except for the first 15 minutes where he's idyllic nuclear family man number one, overweight John Wick, David Cage's wank bank, and cocaine with cocaine accessories. All of whom are involved in the ongoing origami killer case in some way, shape or form. Ethan Mars, the disheveled father, serves as the heroic figure. This one is well written enough to be the sympathetic underdog that the story goes for, or while he slowly dives deeper and deeper into the depths of depravity for the sake of saving his son. Going from a family man who has everything, to, if you end up playing your cards wrong, a man who has nothing. Madison, the David Cage wank bank, is an investigative journalist, digging deeper and deeper into the life of the origami killer, and maybe finding out who he is. Also, she's naked a lot, which is very important to the story. Scott Shelby is... Uh, we'll get to him. And Norman Jaden, a cool as can be man who can perform under pressure just fine. If you ignore his crippling cocaine addiction, that is. And of the four characters, he's my absolute favourite in the game. A point helped by the fact he's probably the most consistently well written. But since all the other character arcs were cut due to peer pressure, I guess we'll never know. Well, that's the character profiles. So, how does the game play? Well, for starters, all four protagonists suffer from a terrible case of muscular dystrophy. The camera fights against you at every slight rounding of a corner, the animations are stiff, and the less said about the cardboard you were as clothing, the better. The gameplay itself consists mostly of walking and quick time events, or QTEs as I'll refer to them. Which sounds boring, but trust me, in the moment, this game can cause a genuine panic. Oh, tickle me, daddy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the chase scenes are both exhilarating and unintentionally hilarious if you fail. If any game does QTEs right, it's this one during the set pieces. Visually, the game's a bit hit and miss. The rain and water is beautiful, and in a game with rain in the title, I should bloody well hope so. But each time I see a loading screen, I feel catfished. The images are stunning, but those same character models are not quite as slick in the gameplay. Except for Madison in this scene. For some reason. I, I don't know why. Which is where we get into the real meat of this video essay. You see, I know I've been praising the game so far, but you must understand. Heavy Rain does not hold up to multiple playthroughs. In fact, it gets more and more ridiculous each time because you notice more and more plot holes each time. Eventually, you'll reach a point where you do a total failure playthrough, missing all the QTEs and guessing the wrong killer, and you know what happens? Well, to get into all that properly, we need to enter the spoiler zone. So, go and play it. I'll wait. back. Hello fellow completers of Heavy Rain! Did you enjoy it? How about that twist, huh? Well, as you now know, the actual origami killer, the person the other three characters were trying to find, was our very own overweight John Wick, Scott Shelby. Ethan was trying to find him because Shelby kidnapped his son, Madison because she stalked Ethan and wanted to use him for a story, but now she loves him, I think? Cut content, incomplete story, blah blah blah. 
And Norman Jaden, because it's his actual job. Shelby is also looking for the killer, but really in a fantastic, but could have been a better executed twist, he's looking for his own loose ends and removing them one by one. It's unfortunate that the story suffers from having underdeveloped character arcs and so much cut content, because the mystery could have stood the test of time much better. As it stands though, and as I said before, the true enjoyment of it for me is finding a strand of plot that doesn't quite work and pulling at it until the game has a breakdown. For example, in the final product, Ethan Mars has two blackouts, and both times he wakes up with an origami figure in his hand, just like the victims. The obvious thing here is to convince you it's Ethan, but it falls apart as it's mentioned twice. It's never really brought up in the real investigation, and even when Ethan is the number one suspect in the case, it's still not brought up. There's that cut content again. You see, if Quantic Dreams didn't peer pressure David Cage away from the more supernatural elements, after the somewhat negative reception Indigo Prophecy had, this would have been explained. Since there's so much to get into here, I recommend instead watching this video by Hero. It explains the cut content, the consequences of them, and why this game is the inconsistent mess it is now. All I will say is that many of the reasons why this game falls apart is because of that cut content talked about in that video. Link in the description below. Moving on to a different plot hole is the thought mechanic. For the most part, thoughts are there for both character immersion, a bit of insight, and as helpful little hints if you're stuck on a puzzle. This is good. I really like this idea. But look here. I'm playing as the origami killer, the person everyone is after. And right now, this second, I have a boy locked in a shed on the other side of town and I'm currently with the mother of another victim and I'm just not thinking about that at all? Nah, I'm sorry, that is not a thing you can do. Not convinced these are plot holes? How about some quickfire examples? How are these video drives up to date with Sean being in current rainwater level? When Madison discovers the name of the killer, how does she know what it is? She's never interacted with him before. How does Norman get away with this scene? He just literally tells a couple of police officers that he's watching the number one suspect, then the suspect escapes and nobody bats an eyelid. And the last one I'll point out, but believe me, there's many more. The typewriter scene. Scott, careful and methodical Shelby, just yeets a guy over the head with a typewriter in the six seconds that the camera is off him. And it's also somehow done quietly enough that a ringing phone would mask it. This game goes for something unique, but in the end, by pulling its punches and not doubling down, we instead got a hilarious but earnest mess that wanted to be more, but it was so afraid of how it would be judged if it committed to the bit. And I like that sort of thing, as proven by my video in defense of Love Never Dies. So go and play it. Enjoy how it fails and falls short. See how many plot holes you can find. Perhaps fail some prompts. They're all super easy to get on time, so you'll have to purposefully miss. Except for this one goddamn prompt which I have never been able to do, no matter how many times I- And at least once. Treat yourself by going for the worst endings. Watch how horribly but also hilariously the game goes, because it at least deserves that. Heavy Rain, my favourite disaster piece.